Hey folks, hope you're doing well. I haven't had a good spontaneous ramble in a while. Somebody's gonna be like, there's nothing good about ramble videos. Unsubscribed! <laughs> okay, that just cracked me up to imagine somebody like over the top aggressively typing. I, I, that's totally how I imagine some of the comments going. Like some basement. Okay, never mind. So, what I wanted to talk about or ramble about today is reviewing swords and uh, pitfalls and challenges and issues and all that good stuff. Now, um, of course, being human is to be subjective. That was, that was not really a good sentence. To be human is to be subjective. But at the same time, subjectivity is the enemy of evaluation. Like, you want a an objective measure, ideally, to compare and to give people an idea of what they're getting in terms of quality. And as you keep doing it and learn, it seems to become more and more of a monumental task, or at least you realize how difficult it is. There is plenty of subjectivity in there. I mean, sure, everybody has certain expectations, like build quality. Does it fall apart as soon as you take it out of the box? Yeah, that's, that's an obvious objective flaw. There, there are certain easy things, okay? If something with the use that it's intended for breaks within a short period of time, that's, that's an obvious problem. But define breaking and define reasonable period of time. Also, taken into consideration, and sometimes people just use things wrong. Like they don't read the manual, they just take it out of the box and just, bleh, just, just you know, <laughs> start going. And they mess it up and then they complain that the thing doesn't work as intended, even though they didn't follow the instructions and, you know, all of that. But some things it's very obvious, like don't operate a toaster underwater or don't try to cut a boulder in half with a chainsaw, stuff like that. But with swords, the extremes are obvious enough. You know, don't take a rapier and try to cut down a redwood tree, you know, stuff like that. But people often disagree on what a reproduction sword is supposed to be able to do and what it isn't supposed to. Like with my wood chopping test, for example, I've, I've talked about that a number of times, that opens up an entire can of worms, because it really depends on, are you, are you chopping like fresh tree limbs? Uh, is it soft wood? Is it hard wood? Is it seasoned? Is it frozen? Are you chopping with the grain or against it? Uh, how thick is the branch, etc., etc. There's th that makes a huge difference, of course. Some of those things a sword should absolutely be capable of dealing with because you know if it can't handle that, then it most certainly couldn't handle contact with other swords or armor or shields or helmets, etc. All of that, even bone. But where exactly do you draw the line? And uh, particularly also with user error, uh, you can be perfectly fine with the same piece of wood chopping into it repeatedly with very good edge alignment. And then on one swing, you mess it up and you twist it and the thing gets stuck and the force acts on it as it twists and bends and then you get a, a gouged edge or, or a bent blade or something on the same thing that otherwise was perfectly fine or the same use or abuse, I suppose. Man, this is deep. Shit's deep, yo. <laughs> Philosophical words of the day. Shit's deep, yo, but it's just snow. And then you have a whole host of other random factors. Like, for example, let's say one of you orders an Albion sword and you know, does some, some cutting with it, like something reasonable, and the pommel falls off or, or you know, whatever, the, the blade breaks or something. It, I, I could totally understand how that person would be like, what is this? I paid this much money for this piece of junk? What the hell? Why is it so overhyped? And then they would leave like an angry review or whatever. But the thing is, this kind of thing can happen to the best makers. Even a high-end, like $5,000 or $10,000 hand-forged cut. Well, okay, I, I need to qualify that a little bit. If it's handmade, then the chances of something like that happening are less because, you know, bladesmiths usually 
test them before shipping out. They, they you know, make extra sure that everything is perfect. It's, it's the most quality control you can get. With production, even high-end production, not quite as much. With Albion, of course, way more than, say... Okay, let, let's not name any names, but budget manufacturers. Let's put it that way. But either way, this kind of thing can happen. Sometimes you have, like, the steel they get. There's a flaw in there that they couldn't see because it's invisible. Like It's a hairline crack or some kind of material fatigue, whatever. It can be all kinds of things. Uh, so stuff like this can happen sometimes randomly. And in that case, it really depends, <laughs> it really depends more on what's the follow-up. Do they ignore you uh, if you show them that? Or are they like, well, tough shit, you shouldn't have done this with the sword? Or will they be like, well, this is unacceptable, this, you know, it shouldn't be like that, we'll replace it, etc. Th that makes a huge difference for the review. But if you don't go through that, then, you know. But at the same time, it can also be, as a reviewer, you may get a, an exceptionally good one. You know, that, that, that is not that's above the usual standard. You know, maybe even in some cases, maybe it was cherry-picked for the review to send out to somebody. I hope that doesn't happen, and I don't think it has ever happened to me so far, because usually, whenever I get stuff sent to me, I do find something wrong with it. It's usually, and in some cases, it, it fails spectacularly. That also happens. But you, know, you don't know, right? So there's there's a bunch of factors in there, and it's not f economically feasible to buy 10 of the same thing and test them all to give a better review. That would be more accurate, but <laughs> who can do that? And sometimes I look back at a review and I'm not satisfied. I'm thinking, oh, I should have, should have done this differently. Uh, this wasn't a, a good test, or I missed something, or... I didn't express my opinion well enough, etc., etc. And <laughs> the worst is always when I see a comment from somebody uh, on on a review, where somebody says, "Oh, I I got this and it broke immediately." <laughs> like you can't help but feel kind of partially responsible for that because you said it was good and somebody bought it and it was crap, at least for them that particular one. And of course, bias is an obvious problem if you already from the get-go like or dislike a certain company then it'll probably color your opinion at least to some extent uh, now hopefully your opinion is based on your prior experiences but even then you know companies change you know sometimes whatever a different ceo comes in or, or whatever the the standards are raised for quality control or they come up with new designs etc so you shouldn't judge a maker for what they did like a couple of years ago uh, unless it was something hideously unethical that's uh, maybe a different story but at the same time how many chances should they get if they keep messing it up you know if there's somebody who consistently churns out garbage then at some point you just have to say, okay, that's it. <laughs> no more chances. You, you blew it. And before I forget, this would also be a good opportunity to remind people to not fall for the appeal to authority fallacy, which is can very much be a thing in case of reviews. If you think a particular reviewer is just awesome and uh, you like that person and you think they, their opinion is always spot on and all that... It, this, this can be dangerous. You should not just trust somebody without paying attention to the arguments they're making, the observations they're making. And this applies to a lot of things. I've seen this a number of times on videos where somebody would ask, uh, you know, what, what's your authority on this matter? Or, or you know, I, I forgot the, the exact formulation, but sometimes you, you get a, you see a comment where somebody basically asks why should i trust you you know you as a person to make accurate statements and that's just the wrong way to look at it like you should look at the arguments being presented and the evidence being brought forth you should look at do they link their sources uh you know what what is it like 
does this argument make sense, etc. You shouldn't just be like, huh, I like the way this person looks. Mm -hmm, They must be right about what they're talking about. Anyway, I think I should leave it at that because I'm clearly running out of usable light for the video, so uh, quality is dropping. Um, Thanks for listening to this ramble. Uh, Maybe it was interesting or, I don't know, amusing. (laughs) Something. Something good, hopefully. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Before you move on, I want to let you know about a fundraiser for our friend Vaughn, who's in a messed up situation right now. He's a craftsman in Tasmania, and you've probably seen some of his work in my videos. He made the custom shields that we unboxed recently, and the copper axe, and a number of other things. The massive wildfires in that area forced him and his family to evacuate, which used up all the savings they had, so now they're really struggling. Vaughn himself is not asking for anything, but several of my patrons decided to set up this fundraiser, and we all think you really deserve the support. So if you're willing to help out, even if it's just a dollar, I'll leave the link to the fundraiser in the description below. Thanks, guys.